Hello everybody today, this is Mr. Gordon, we're here to cast some Dota 2. Let me turn on these Dota sounds, let me go and move over to the casting screen here, and let's get this game started. This is University of Nevada, remaining. Reno versus Crescenta Valley High School. These are going Five to be the two teams facing up against remaining. each other in this grand finals matchup in the high school star league. Um, well, HSL Reserve Summer time. Academic Showdown. So let's see how well these teams will be able to perform today. I just realized my fans probably a little bit loud in the Dire background. I'll have to go pick. turn that off in just one moment. But either way, um, this could be a very interesting game here. Uh, Crescenta Valley really just tore through the high school division of this um, of this uh, tournament here. The, um, last week I was able to cast them, and they just they did amazingly. Every single match that they played in was essentially almost somewhat of a stomp, I guess you could say. And University of Nevada, Reno, I have not really had all that much of an opportunity to be able to go and Ten cast seconds them. Remaining. But, uh, you know, we'll have to see how well Five they play here. Remaining. But um, this could be a very Double interesting gone. matchup here between these two teams. Give me one second to go and turn down Radiant that fan just one pick. moment. Okay, now we're back, everybody. So, on to the match right here. We see University of Nevada, Reno, going and uh, going and picking up the Wraith King and the Shadow Shaman as their two pickups. Wraith King, a very interesting uh, hero here because of the fact Ten that it really puts a lot, of, um, a lot of doubt in the uh, opposite team's mind because of the fact that you don't know exactly Five where it's going to be remaining. Ran. A lot of teams will run it as a support, as the Wraith King running as a support. A lot of, a lot of other teams will Reserve run it as time. basically a dedicated carry. And there's a lot of, you know, those two different ways really put it into two different ways that you can, can actually go about you know, playing it, but I have to see how well this goes. Now, at the same time, Crescenta Valley with the Doom, one of, in my opinion, is one of the strongest heroes in the I entire game. The um, he has the ability Radiant to just Team completely Bang. shut down a hero in the late game and just completely make them null Dire and void Team during Bang. the game, um, especially during the late game. One of the most powerful things about Doom is the fact that you sit there and you have a, um, a five-man or you have a... Um, a, a five-man team fight towards the uh, end of the game, and suddenly, like, let's say you have a Luna, Luna's farmed as anything, and suddenly Ten Doom goes on to it, and it's completely and utterly useless. So, we'll have to see how this goes. But, five seconds Major's remaining. Prophet is the second pickup here from Crescenta Valley, so they're going to go for some push here, um, although Reserve at the same time, time with the Nature's Prophet pickup, that means that this is going to be a carry Doom. Um, if you didn't have the Nature's Prophet here, I guess you would see University of Nevada thinking between will this be a carry Doom or an offlane Doom? What are we going to be seeing from this Doom? But now with the Nature's Prophet pickup, it basically means that this is a guaranteed carry Doom because you're going to put Nature's Prophet into the offlane here. Now, the difficult, difficult thing here is that if you put the Wraith King and the Shadow Shaman in a lane together to go up against the Nature's Prophet, Nature's Prophet is going to be a very, very annoyed by this lane because of the fact that you have a really great setup stun from the Wraith King or Shadow Shaman coming in with either one of his two different disables, Radiant be that Hex or bang. Shackles. If he, if they land any of those on Nature's Prophet, the rest of them, the other two that they have between the two heroes there, will be able to be enough to be able to secure the kill on Nature's Prophet. So he's probably going to need to be very, very careful in the off lane here. Um, but at the same time, University of Ten seconds Nevada, remaining. Reno, go and ban out the Pugna after the after Crescenta Valley ban Dire out the Death Prophet and ban. the Skywrath Mage. So I'll have to be, we'll have to be able to see what the plan is here from them. Now, Death Prophet, I'm very interested in the fact that she didn't get picked up here very early on. Um, Death Prophet, in my mind, another one of the strongest heroes in the current meta. Her pushing Ten power is above and remaining. beyond spectacular, above and beyond the average of any hero out there, Five especially when it comes down to just, um, her ability to even move from the laning stage to this a pure pushing stage Reserve and then time. even move with that gold into more or less a carry position. Uh, if you get things such as the... Um, if you have things such as the Shiva's Guard, um, a Heart, a Bloodstone, things Dire like that, team pick. Death Prophet can really do a lot of work. Now, at the same time, University of Novato do ban out the uh, the Tinker here. Not going to want to see that hero. And that's one big hero that a lot of teams have started to pick up. A lot of players have started to pick up um, in their pub matches, even things like that. Um, most people that play Dota in pub matches will now officially have a very, very large hatred for Tinker because he's just one of those heroes that can completely ruin matches because towards the late game, suddenly he gets an Ethereal Ten Blade seconds. and Dagon, and then he has all the mana in the world and everything like that, and you can't stop him. Five seconds but, as remaining. But University of Nevada, they now get their third pickup here coming up, and this pickup's really going to be able to time. see, I believe this will be able to show us what this Wraith King will be, if it will be the support or the carry Wraith King. Um, I mean, in this sort of a situation where you're going up against a Doom, I actually think that a carry Wraith King wouldn't actually be 
the worst decision ever. I think it would actually be a very good decision, because of the fact that if you doom the Wraith King, he'll then die and come back, because of the fact that doom does not stop his reincarnate. Um, uh, reincarnate is one of the few spells that doom doesn't actually stop, um, along with like a bad and ultimate and things like that, but um, Wraith King will then come back up, and once Doom is down on him, and he comes back up, you suddenly have a full farm Wraith King that's going to be able to run around and, you know, do Wraith King things. Radiant now, University of Nevada, do go and pick up the Ancient Apparition, so yes, this will in fact be a carry Wraith King with a Shadow Shaman and Ancient Apparition supporting. Now, again, this is another nice, um, a nice hero to be able to put into this tri-lane here with the Wraith King, Shadow Shaman, and Ancient, um, with the Wraith King and Shadow Shaman to make it into a tri-lane, because of the fact that as I was saying before, you already have Shackles, you already have Hex, and you already have the Wraith King Stun. Wraith King Stun, if people don't know, is actually, in my opinion, one of the most overpowered stuns in the entire game. Ten the only seconds thing that makes it remaining. balanced is the fact that it has 140 mana cost and it's on a strength hero who really Five has a lot of uh, intelligence or mana problems throughout the entire game. So, um, with those Reserve three time. possible setups, Ancient Apparition is going to have a very, very easy time getting off uh, Cold Feats onto targets. Um, to be able to go and set up kills on the Nation's Prophet over and over and over again, if it looks as though Crescenta Valley is going to be running the Nation's Prophet in the lane versus them as a 1v3. Earthshaker. Earthshaker, though, is the pick up here from Crescenta Valley. Dire and team pick. Honestly, I think that, um, I think that Earthshaker is a very nice support. Um, he's really, really great at being able to stop team fights if he needs to, stop pushes, things like that. And I think that's going to be very, very helpful versus, uh, versus the lineup that we have from University of Nevada because, um, you sit there and you can, um, you sit there with the Earthshaker and you get one fissure on the high ground across the creep wave and suddenly those creeps can't make it up to the tower. And let's say the Shadow Ten Shaman goes and uses remaining. his wards and then the creeps can't get to it. Those are easy pickings on those wards. So Five seconds if you're remaining. able to do that, then that's really, really nice to be able to have for that anti-push. And that's what you need against a lineup the University of Reserve Nevada time. are currently, uh, are currently drafting. You need to be able to stop their push. You need to be able to stop their aggression as a whole. But Necrophos is the pickup here from University pick. of Nevada. This is not a pickup I was expecting. Um, because I don't find Necrophos to exactly be the most powerful hero in the game or anything like that. I don't think he's... Uh, I mean, where are they going to actually lane him here? I mean, they might try and lane him as a solo safe support. Um, solo safe carry and then put his, uh, this current trilane that uh, University of Nevada has as, as an aggressive trilane, which I think could actually work Ten out pretty well now that I look remaining. at it, because if you put on uh, Chilling Touch onto the Shadow Shaman, Wraith King, and Ancient Apparition, and Five they're going up against remaining. already a dual melee lane when they only have one melee as the Wraith King, that could actually work out pretty well Reserve for time. University of Nevada here if they decide to try and aggressively trilane this. Now that would put the Necrophos versus Ignatius Prophet, which would actually mean that Ignatius Prophet would have a much better lane than he would have had before, and that will lead to some issues on the side of the University of Nevada, because if he gets up an early Midas, gets up early Necronomicon, gets up um, those types of early items, even if he wants to go for something like an Orc of Malevolence and try and be a fighting prophet, then that's going to spell a lot of trouble for University of, uh, of Nevada here if they do let him actually get some, uh, some form of farm. Now, Waiting for the next pickup for Crescenta Valley. Uh, I feel like they need to go and pick up a nice, strong support right now. Um, but they do decide to instead go for their mid here, going for Dire the TA. Deciding to go for a really nice, strong mid hero that they know is going to be able to most likely dominate the middle lane. And I'm wondering if this actually means that they might be trying, they might be thinking that there's going to be a Necrophos in the middle lane, and they're going to be putting the uh, Templar Assassin versus the Necrophos. Now, I believe that this Ten is just a movie. Really? Yeah, so Heartstopper Aura. Um, would that actually be stopped by refraction from TA? It'll go right through it and just remaining. remove her HP. So that's a little bit of a uh, issue. And I don't know if Crescenta Valley took that into consideration when picking up the Reserve TA here. Time. But at the same time, it does mean that it also won't be able to tick out the refraction charges. So regular right clicks will still be uh, stopped by those refraction Ten charges. Seconds remaining. Now, Viper is the ban out actually from the University of Nevada. Ban. I find that pretty interesting based on the fact that Viper is usually a very good hero to be able to put versus the TA. And that might have actually been a hero that they were Dire trying to, that they could have actually picked up here. But with Clockwork Banner from Crescenta Valley, it looks as though both teams have sort of accepted the fact that this will in fact be a mid-Necrophos, which is not something I was expecting at all. I mean, yes, Necrophos can have a large impact if he's put into the middle lane and played effectively, but I feel as though it would be better to put him into a solo safe lane sort of position, run this aggressive tri-lane, and then pick up an even better mid. Especially something like the Viper, I think, would have been very, very powerful, because then the Ten sheer amount of sustain remaining. he would have been able to have with the Viper's tankiness, the Wraith King and his, um, and his life for being the Necrophos remaining. being the ultimate sustained hero in the entire game with his constant death pulse spam. Dragon I think that could have worked out very well, but they instead decided to go for the Dragon Radiant Knight here. Team pick. 
Again, another pickup I wasn't really expecting, but I do actually like this pickup quite a bit because it really does add a lot to the um, to the overall tankiness of the University of Nevada draft. Uh, you now have Wraithing and Dragonite who are going to be able to be front men for the uh, for the. University of Nevada side here, which is going to be very, very powerful for them to be able to have, um, as well as the fact that you now have the pushing power coming in from Dragon Knight from his level 1 and level 2 ultimate. Um, Ten the same exact thing, remaining. for example, with the Death Prophet. If Death Prophet or DK hit level 6 in the middle lane, Five seconds or any remaining. lane, really, and then you leave them alone for a minute, your tower in that lane will die. It's that simple. Um, Dragon Knight's level time. 1 ultimate is ridiculously powerful for taking down towers. The same exact thing with uh, Death Prophet's ultimate. Very, very um, uh, ridiculous at taking down towers. So, Crescenta need to be able to try and answer this. Now, the other problem I see is that if this is going to, in fact, be a Dragon Knight in the middle lane, then TA should be able to crush Dragon Knight in the middle lane quite easily. Ten seconds um, it remaining. should not be even close to a, um, a close to a fair fight there. But Marana is the payoff from Crescenta Valley. This is actually pretty interesting what they're deciding to do here in terms of their uh, in terms of their picks. And I'm actually quite interested in what we're going to be seeing coming out in terms of their lane decisions here with these heroes. Um, I mean, when it comes down just to the draft, I feel as though I actually do prefer University of Nevada here quite a bit in terms of the draft, but I feel at the same time, if Crescenta Valley can really perform, if they can get this TA ridiculously farmed, or the Doom ridiculously farmed, and Marana is hitting her arrows, then really I feel as though Crescenta Valley, this is their game to lose. But at the same time, if they do make mistakes in the early and they don't get that quick farm that they need on uh, either the Doom or the Templar Assassin, or on the Marana for that matter, if they don't get that on them, then I feel like University of Nevada will just be able to sort of walk at them and just win the game that way. But only time will tell with, sort of, with those sorts of things when it comes to the draft, so we'll have to see how well each team does in fact perform to figure out whose Prepare draft is the battle. better. But let's quickly go over who's going to be playing what on either side as we have a pause coming out. It wouldn't be an official game of Dota if there wasn't a pause at the very start. Ah, quick little drink there. But let's go and look over on the side of Crescenta Valley High School. We see the Earthshaker being played by Green Re. We have the Templar Assassin played by Canyon. Marana played by Loy. The Doom being played by Wheatmaster. And finally, the last player it is in fact based John Arino, June Harino, on the Nature's Prophet. So, if you look over on the other side, on the side of University of Nevada, Reno. Uh, this is interesting. Um, wow, okay, it, that's actually pretty interesting. It says that he's disconnected there, but apparently he's actually here, because he's buying stuff, so that means that he has to be here, because allies can't spend gold for you. But if you look over on their uh, on their lineup right now, and looking at who is going to play what, we see that Fish is going to be the one on the Dragon Knight, Wraith King going to be played by Ruin, the Shadow Shaman going to be played by Heaven's Cloud, Mark going to be on the Ancient Apparition support, and finally, last player is in fact Ben Hawmine, on the Necrophos, so he's going to be going up to the top to lane as the solo. So it was, in fact, that mid lane uh, is going to, in fact, be the mid lane Dragon Knight. Now, the thing that I still don't understand is why University of Nevada would actually decide to ban out the Viper and not just pick it up for themselves. Um, because Viper really does do amazingly well versus Templar Assassin, because all you need is one form of detection in the middle lane. You put down the Sentry Ward, and something you're wrong. Bell Strike is useless, and the uh, poison attack from Viper the is begins. basically free harassment on the Templar Assassin and just eats through her refraction charges, or her defensive refraction charges, that is. So, we'll have to see how well each team performs here in the laning stage, but in terms of this tri lane, this should be, or actually, it's just a tri lane down bottom, just an aggressive tri lane versus a uh, defensive dual lane here of the Earthshaker and the Marana, with what looks like a Doom Jungle. It's been a while since I've seen in competitive play just a straight Doom jungle. Um, usually it's better to put him as the carry in the lane, um, just because it's an all-around easier farm that way. But he's going to get a very early Seder Tormentor here, which is actually, in my opinion, one of the best, if not the best, jungling creep for Doom in the very beginning, uh, because of the insane HP regen that it actually gives to him. He has 5 HP regen now just with that. Like, no tangos or anything like that. It's basically having almost a tango on you 24-7. Um, which is extremely, extremely powerful. Oh, he already has, you know, zero armor, but he has a nice HP pool. So, Nature's Prophet up top. He's going to be going versus this Necrophos, and I really feel as though this is a bit of a, um, bit of an issue here for them, because Necrophos, again, is not going to be able to completely shut down this Nature's Prophet here, um, and so it's going to be Nature's Prophet getting some form of farm, unlike the other situation where you put this as a defensive tri-lane, and you become a nice aggressive hero, so... Yeah. 
Let's see how that does play out for them. Now, a little bit of pressure is being put on this top tower by uh, by the Necrophos, trying to just get a little bit of harassment out of this tower, but not really all that much in terms of effective damage. Not much that you can actually do here, but at the same time, this looks like it could possibly be a wrap around here as there goes the Chilling Touch. They're going to be able to go into a little bit of harassment here. Are they going to try and go for the Marana? There goes Shackles on Marana. She doesn't have Leap Skill. Never mind. There goes the Leap Skill, but there goes the Fisher as well. There goes the Wraithing Ult, or not the Wraithing Ult, but the Wraithing Skull going to be hitting. Now, Lloyd going to be the first blood as we see the Shadow Shaman get that Give last right click in. Heaven's Cloud ancestors. grabbing that first blood. So, there we Dyer's go. bottom tower is under we attack. That for them. Now, at the same time, we'll be able to see what the next, uh, what the next plan will be here. Because at the same time, Denied. Marana dying in the early game is not a good start for any team. And you don't want the Marana to start to die early on because she is a hero that really does need to be ahead to be effective. Um, I always say that in the cast is the fact that Marana is not a carry that can sit there with equal farm as everybody else and just carry. She's not one of those carries. She needs to have above average farm so let's see how that works out for them top lane though still nature of the prophet is seven and one although necrophos is ten and zero right now so he has no denies but at the same time he is getting nice last hits right now top in the last hit chart in the middle lane though is basically even between the two of these um the two of these so um between the two of these mid players what i'm trying to say templar assassin and dragon knight which is actually again pretty radiant to top tower are, is under attack even um, I was thinking the TA would be able to pretty easily decimate, actually, the, uh, the Dragon Knight. But at the same time, down bottom, Wraith King just kills the Marana again. So Marana's second death in the game. I wasn't even expecting her to be caught out again, as seeing as how she already had skilled, um, Leap. But apparently she does, in fact, get caught out again. And this is Wraith King with 1,435 gold already at the three-minute mark. So... This is going to be a real interesting game for Wraith King. Is he going to try and go for just a straight Midas early on? Try and get that nice farm up? Or is he going to try and go for power tries, things like that? Um, only has the boots up now in his inventory, so I don't think he's going to try and rush a Midas, going to instead try and go for, oh, pause is going to be coming out here, yep, there goes the pause, um, Fish deciding that he needs a pause here, apparently part of the game is in fact bugged right now, that's never fun, oh boy, oh yeah, that's not good, um, okay, so now he does officially disconnect, yeah, so apparently what just happened there is that um, he just lost all of his gold and it went to all of the uh, all the enemy heroes, or his heroes here. Um, that's not good at all. So I'll just see what the plan is going to be here to be able to fix that. Um, he's going to need to reconnect. Um, we don't know what we're going to do about the gold, though. Um, because right now he is, he is 16 and 0 in terms of last hits. Um, which just completely sets him back in terms of his overall form, which I think we need to figure out something in terms of what we're going to do about this, because, you know, a Necrophos that suddenly sits there and he has, you know, a little bit over a thousand gold or something like that, and suddenly having zero gold is not going to be very good. So, let's see what the plan will be. Now, at the same time, in terms of other heroes farm, TA, uh, she's sitting at 330 gold. She already has her bottle up. Um, looks as though we also have her boots up. And looks like they're just going to go with it. I don't think that there's anything we can really do at this point. Yeah, he is now technically not abandoned anymore. Like, that's that's depressing when stuff like that happens. No, at the same time, Dune taking a lot of damage. Will, in fact, fall in the jungle there as Shadow Shaman and the... Spirit Guide, I might give you a call. And the Ancient Apparition and the Shadow Shaman picking him off there. Now... That's, uh, that's another kill going the way of University of Nevada, so they're Denied. really starting to dominate this game early on, and I was talking during the draft about the fact that I don't think that uh, Crescenta Valley is going to really have a team that can fight from behind all that well, but I feel like University of Nevada Reno with an early lead here is really going to start to just be able to snowball out of control with the tankiness of their lineup as a whole and just the sustainability that their lineup has. I mean, you already have a mana boost in the Shadow Shaman, that's an amazing item to start off with here early on. Doom, though, decided to go and get rid of that satyr and went for the, um, went for the swiftness aura on from the centaur. Now, Fish, he has the illusion open. He's going to be looking for something here. Um, Doom devours, actually, the alpha wolf there. He's going to get that damage bonus from it, which is always nice to be able to have. Now, Necrophos up to 380 gold now. He has 23 last hits. So the Ancient Apparition is just going to go and steal off Doom's farm here in the middle lane. And we have a possible... Nope, not going to try and rotate it on Canyon here. Canyon will be okay. 
At the same time, he is, he is in a little bit of uh, harm's way here. His Shadow Shaman and Ancient Apparition are just sitting around the corner. But Heaven's Cloud going to show himself and take two shout tower shots here. So, there we go. Just a little bit of damage, but he's okay. The big thing, though, is that uh, not able to go and gank that TA as he was revealed. Now, Doom, he's just sitting in the jungle right now. Um, right now, he has 11 last hits, 0 denies. Well, of course, he has 0 denies. He's just sitting in the jungle. That will be an interesting one, getting denies while in the jungle. So, Wraith King down bottom. He has 1,760 gold, so he's getting... Uh, He's getting himself some good farm right now. Currently 24 and 11 in terms of last hits and denies. So he is uh, right now third in terms of that. Nagarfos is still leading, though, in terms of those last hits, with TA being close second. But at the same time, DK is still doing pretty well. 22 and 5. Um, only two last hits, three last hits now, oh, behind no. the TA. So, yeah. Well, Ancient Apparition is going to be able to grab a haste from here, or at least just ping it out, and looks as though they're going to send Dragon Knight down there to go and grab it. He does have a up a Glove of Haste as well as Boots of Speed, so it looks like he's going to be going for the uh, for Power Treads for himself early on here, which, I mean, I think is the best option for him. Um, he could have decided to go for the Greedy build, go for Hand of Midas on the Dragon Knight, um, but I don't think that's going to be the best Radiance option for him, top really. Tower is under attack. He needs to be able to start to fight pretty early on here, take some towers pretty early on, and going for a Midas would not be the best idea for that one. We'll have to see. Now, racing down bottom. He's still 29 and 12 in terms of last season. Dyer's season. middle last tower season. is under attack. So he's farming up perfectly fine here. And looks like we have a rotation coming in from uh, from University of Nevada. They're looking for an opportunity to go on this Marana, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to. Although, we might just see Dragon like, go and pop his ultimate and try and take this tower. We'll have to see what's happening. But, uh, well, that yeah, looks like they're just going to try and dive in here. Oh, that's a really quick link to breaking in. And Fissure does come out from the Earthshaker, trying to keep him back. But at the same time, boy, there goes the Cold Feet propping on him, going to keep him down. And now, looks though we're going to be seeing this Earthshaker lose his life. But at the same time, Shadowfarm taking a lot of damage from this tower. The tower will not actually claim his life, but... Cloud. Very, very low, and now Nation's Prophet is in. Needs to send those Treants in after the uh, Shadow Shaman. If he's able to do that, then he can possibly get the kill here. Never mind, TA is going to be coming in and be able to get this kill. Never mind, Hex goes in onto her. Now Fish going to lose his life with the Dragonite. Yep, there goes Dragonite losing his life, and now Shadow Shaman. There goes the kill onto the TA, or onto the Shadow Shaman from the TA. And Arrow does fly from the Marana, not going to be hitting onto the Wraith King. And he will, in fact, just be able to easily blink Dyer's himself middle away. Tower is under attack. So Radiance top tower is under um, attack. Nice reaction, actually. I feel like Radiant from the sense of valley, they were able to come fortified. back and get themselves two kills. At the same time, though, they did lose three heroes there. It looks like, um, as they lost both the Marana, the Earthshaker, as well as the Nature's Prophet there. But they were able to get two kills on the board for themselves, which is a nice start for them. Now, while that's all happening, Necrophos so just sitting up top, farming to his heart, heart's content, getting towards his uh, getting towards his mechanism. Now, Necro hit by one lone fissure there from uh, the Earthshaker, who's still only level 3. So, only level 2 fissure, not the most damage in the world from it. But it was enough to be able to make the Necrophos try and just back off a little bit there. Loy in the bottom lane, no boots yet, really only has the Ring of the Aquila right now. Let's we'll see what's going to happen with him, because he's really just getting no farm. And I was just saying before with the Marana, it's really difficult to be able to come back as the Marana when it comes to farm, because she doesn't have any real farming abilities. Yes, she has Star Storm, but you don't want to use that just for um, farming, basically. And the fact is that also, like I said before, she needs to be able to be above the other carries when it comes to farm in order to be effective against them. Now, looks like we're going to be seeing Earthshaker. Oh, he is going to notice what looks like Ancient Apparition and Wraith King both around there. Now, the Observer Ward is down from them right now, Radiant's bottom tower before. is under attack. Great, stun goes in on to the Earthshaker right now. Is is the the there goes the Fissure coming out from the Earthshaker, but now we also have Heaven's Cloud coming in as the Shadow Shaman. We're going to be able to go and help get that kill. The same time gets the kill there. Now, Loy is going to be able to be behind the tower here. Dragon Knight is driven off by the tower, actually, but there's four heroes now down bottom here. Ruin on the Wraith King is pretty low, but he does have his Reincarnate available if he wants to just go and spend that to get his HP back up. And there goes the Blink Radiant's again. bottom tower uh, is under attack. He's not even been trying to suicide Dyer's the tower middle there, but tower this tower is, is still attack. going to die nonetheless. And Loy, oh, this is not to be good. There goes the stun out from Radiant's Fish. Loy is, tower has is uh, you know, invised up, and they're going to be able to go and keep him here. There's no way he's going to be able to escape this. Um, never mind, he does have Leap available, and there goes the Leap going to be able to leap into the trees. And will they be able to go and catch him out here? Doesn't look like it. Uh, does anybody have, like, a Quelling Blade or anything like that? No, they do not. So, looks like we will see Lloyd be able to escape. But at the same time, 
He is going to be stuck there for quite some time, basically getting absolutely nothing. Top lane, though, Necroforce taking quite a bit of damage, and will, in fact, lose his life. Nature's Prophet will, in fact, be able to get the kill there with a little bit of help from Earthshaker, so Necroforce not able to get that kill. Nice job from them, actually, helping to shut him down just a little bit. Now, Lloyd does have the leap mana available, at least, Dyer's but middle tower now he's going to be leap away. And Necrophos. Oh, goodness. Did he really? Yeah, looks like he did, actually. That's not good at all. Um, I don't even know what we can do at this point to help him out. But losing gold like that is going to keep his mech coming, um, his mech timing down over and over again. Which is not going to help him at all. Doom is pretty close to death right now in the jungle, but he's going to be okay. Does have the Tranquil Boots up, so his uh, HP is going to regen pretty quickly here, with that uh, with that being active. Now, TA did grab that middle T1 tower, which is a good start for the side of Crescenta Valley. So they're going to be able to go and get a little bit of gold off of the map. Now, the question is, will this greed from Crescenta Valley pay off in the end, not be able to work out in the University of Nevada, be able to go and take this game here? Uh, so, let me see what's going to happen now. Loy in the bottom lane is the Marana. Just gonna keep on trying to farm up. Does now at least have brown boots up, but at the same time, not really much to talk about at all for him. Just trying to get us as much as he can. But he has been shut down quite effectively here in the lane without um, with being killed three times already. Oh, here Dyer's we go. We'll be trying to go on the canyon. We'll be see. Yep, there's a attack coming out from the Shadow Shaman, but at the same time, we do have the Fissure coming out. There's the dust coming out onto canyon right now, but we're going to see Weed Master coming in. There's both the Echo Sign coming out from the Earthshaker. We'll be able to go into Ruin here. We have the Doom available. They don't want to use the Echo Sign out from the Green Carnage. There goes the Green Carnage coming down, and now he's going to be coming back up with full HP and life. And there goes the Blink away. Not going to be able to stop that there. Is there any form of stopping him there? There goes the TA Trap going to be hitting onto him. His Blink is going to be available in six seconds. Will they be able to stop this? Doesn't look like it at all. And he will, in fact, be able to just walk away. With that instant blink out, no way to be able to stop him there, as nobody on the side of Crescenta Valley has a blink themselves. TA instead deciding to go for early drums for herself. Doom, of course, not having anything even close to that. He is deciding to go for a Midas instead. So this is going to be a pretty late Midas, actually. Um, he's died once, he only has 28 last hits, and that's in the jungle um, as the Doom, which is not where you want to be sitting at all with that hero. Top lane pinks are coming out. They want to try and defend against this Necrophos, who does have, have up the headdress as well as the buckler now. So he's going to be able to push his tower pretty effectively because he can go and use that buckler on the creep and get the armor up and be able to keep them pushing forward. But this tower already right now down to 244 HP out of 1300. He's getting pretty low. Well, pings are coming out right now on the ancient apparition. I don't think they're going to be able to do anything to this. Although at the same time, we might see Nature probably Vanish. try and pour it in, but I don't think he's going to be able to. Um, Morana Ultimate did come out, but wasn't really trying to get any kills there. I think it was more or less to be able to have Morana be able to escape. Um, Nation Apparition, though, he's going to be able to keep his life here. Now, Nature's Prophet, looks like he's going for a Maelstrom with the early um, Glove of Haste pickup and then the Mithril Hammer for himself. Now, Templar Assassin waiting in this right here inside of Mel to be able to go and also try and go on somebody if they try and gank this Nation's Prophet. But I don't know if they're actually going to try and gank this Nation's Prophet here. They might have some suspicions, and there we go. TA, right when Necrophos is about to go and come in, decides to go and break that meld, and shows herself. So Necrophos instantly just backs up and says, Oh, okay, so there's somebody else here. This is not a good idea at all, trying to go in on something like this. Now, bottom lane, nobody's farming this up, as we have uh, the Marana coming back to the lane finally. She does have up her power treads now. Not usually that we like to see, or at least I like to see on the Marana. Usually the uh, phase boots are better, because it just gives her better raw damage. Um, which is really the thing that Marana needs. She doesn't exactly need stats, she just needs raw damage to be able to have for her. But, this top lane, this is going to be the death of the top lane here for the Radiant. I ran out of the tower down to 95 HP, nobody is here to be able to deny it. Maybe TA, but nope, not even going to try and get any close enough to be able to do that. It'd be basically Radiant's a suicide top tower to has fallen. Now, it's probably getting close to his Maelstrom. He has a 550 gold, and he's up 600 for that recipe, and then he has up the full Maelstrom, which is going to help him be able to push a lot quicker, um, which is something that they really are going to need from this Nature's Prophet to be able to bring this game back for them. Because if he can get some early towers here, or at least get some towers at all for them, besides the middle one, that'll be really helpful for them. And now, pause, and gold is gone again. Yep. Third time gold is gone. Disconnect from the ne Necrophos again. I mean... Yeah, there's nothing they can really do at this point, because Necrophos, like, it's 14 minutes in, basically 15 minutes in here um, for him, and he doesn't even have the mech up yet, and with 67 last hits, he should have had that up probably about 4 minutes ago at this point. He should have had somewhere in a 10 minute mech, but sadly, losing your gold 3 times, um, not aiding at all in that, so... 
yeah, he, like I said, like he's saying right now, it's really delaying their mech. Should really have honestly been somewhere around a 10-minute uh, mech. Um, so... We'll have to see what will happen here. Um, I mean, that might have to be what we do here, but sucks having to pause every single three minutes. Um, another problem is that I feel bad for University of Nevada here and the fact that the damage has already Radiant's been done top to them. Tower is under um, attack. A mech being delayed by this much is massive when you're relying on your necropost to be in a solo lane. Oh, arrow flies from Arana. Going Dyer's to hit the necropost tower here. Is under so attack. He's going to caught out here a little bit, but no Radiant's real way to be able to follow up that five-second arrow stun. So he's going to be perfectly fine. Popping the ultimate, it looks like they're going to try and go tower. The wars get attack. dropped as well from the Shadow Shaman. Radiant they're going to try and take this key fortified. to top tower from the Radiant Arrow Flies. Oh, going to be hitting on to the Necrophos again here. Will they be able to go on anything here? Don't think that they will. They're going to be going out on to... Oh, Doom's going to be actually going out on to the Shadow Shaman. Going to be keeping him there. Now he's trying to bring him They're going to be fine. They're going to be hitting on three heroes. There, there goes the Echo Slam. Going to be hitting on two. Now we will expect to see the Earthshaker losing his life. If Wraithing is able to get his stun off there, go slow on to Wraithing. Who is going to get his hit? No, we will not, as he's able to blink away, in fact, not taking any damage there. Crap, not able to go and stop the blink, and now TP away from Necrophos, just going down to the bottom lane, not even going to go and TP back to base, just saying, screw it, I want to be able to just go and push, so that's what he's doing, he's going to be able to stop the push from Crescenta Valley, as well as, uh, as well as get himself some, f himself some farm and a way to safety, so nice call from him being able to do that, but at the same time, it looks Dyer's as though University of Nevada will in fact be attack. losing their top tower here, and they will be going to the Templar Dyer's Assassin, who has a 1400 gold um, Dragon Knight now has up his armlet, so he is going for a real nice, uh, fighting build here in the middle game. So, he's gonna be... Oh, goodness. Yeah, this is, this is not looking good at all. Um, I don't really know what the plan should be. Um, I, mean, I, I don't have a call with this. I'm not the admin, so we'll just go and keep on casting the match as it's going on. But with it right now being 16 minutes in, let's go and look at the net worth, and... Yeah, that's that's sad right there. You know, eighteen hundred fifty gold for him. Um, in terms of net worth though, seventy three hundred up for the Wraithen right now. By far the highest farmed hero in the game. Thirteen hundred gold ahead of the next highest, who is the Templar Assassin. And right behind Templar Assassin, only down by about fifty gold, really, is in fact the uh, Dragon Knight. So, yeah, Dragon Knight. He's in the middle lane. Will we see an arrow hit somebody? Yes, we will. But it's going to be the Wraith King. And he does have his reincarnation up. And he also has 3,000 gold. Like, why do you need that much gold, Wraith King? And, yeah. Oh, right now, Necrophos is actually giving away his gold right now. Yep. He's not... He's fully abandoned right now. So, I don't even know what the plan is going to be for him. Nish Prophet over flies through. As you see, Nish Prophet pushing bottom his bottom lane. Is under attack. And if I can be coming out there with the Doom onto the Shadow Shaman going in fact to select her. There we go. Wraith King about to be the next target. And this is right to tell me Nish Prophet looks at the Wraith King going to be taking a bit of damage from one pack with Slife right now. Will we be able to see them be able to actually kill him before he gets off his blink? Doesn't need to go off the blink, so there goes the stun. Now they're going to be able to go on the Thursday girl, because they're going to lose his life here in just a moment at the... Ice Blast is already on him, and now TA going to try and run, and will in fact be able to escape for just a little bit here, but only one down on the side of the University of Nevada, with two dead on the side of Crescenta Valley right now, and Nation Prophet needs to try and go to a different lane and just try and push, they can't Radiance fly and fight right now, they're not nearly attack. strong enough to be able to do that, and oh, now they're going to be able to try and go in onto the Nation Prophet, but the Moonlight Shadow is in fact on him, and now, which we're going to be seeing, the race can lose, lose his life there, and he does not have his ultimate, now they're going to fly from around, they're not going to be, hit, be able to hit anybody there, now Fish, slowed down by the Templar Assassin Trap, and now we actually have the Shadow Shaman, Link in, but not going to be able to go for anything there. Now Doom is back into the fight here. He does have up the mech for his team, at least. But now, Dragon Knight, just armlet togging a little bit to make sure that he is okay. And Arrow Flies from Marana going to hit on the Necrophos. Will they be able to go in on this? Don't know if they will. Leap is available from Marana. She wants to try and jump in, but she's not nearly Dyer's strong enough to go tower and instantly is under that attack. Necrophos. So he will be safe for right now. I mean, I guess the one good thing for the side of University of Nevada is the fact that it's at least giving him a lot of gold over to the Wraith King as well as the Dragon. The arrow flies, hits onto the Necrophos, and now will they be able to go for something here? Don't know if they will. Oh, never mind. Here, they're going to try and go for the Necrophos. Dyer's they're going to try and go in. Attacks. And a couple records that Dyer's will, in fact, be his death. And now, Fish, let's try and go. Inferno takes you. Dyer's bottom tower has been denied. Pop his invisibility room and use it as an escape. Now, 
Shadow Shaman does have his wards up in four seconds here. And with that being said, let's actually go and look at the gold lead right now with about a 2,500 gold lead going the way of University of Nevada. There's experience actually over a 4,000 experience lead going the way of Crescenta Valley. Now, over on the items as a whole, we see that really... Um, we see that Wraithing has up his Blink Dagger, Shadow Shaman has up his Blink Dagger, Necrophos, sadly, just nothing as I was talking about, or has been happening all game so far. Um, but at the same time, we see the Ancient Sniper has up his Arcane Boots and there's an Urn of Shadow, so he's getting some decent farm at least. He has up 1600 gold right now. Um, don't know what he's trying to save up for. I mean, not really that many useful items you can go for on an Ancient Apparition that are going to be worth that much right away. Um, because you want to be able to try and go for things such as the, um... Uh, so this is the Aghanim Scepter, which means that he would want to try and go and pick up a point booster right now. But not deciding to go for that right yet. I'm waiting behind and I don't even know what he's actually up to right now. He's just sort of sitting in the fountain. Now, close to the middle lane. Now, he's, I think he's actually back, but it's, it's just not getting any gold whatsoever. Now, being 10 to 11. Um, and looks as though, yep, there goes a pause. Uh, so it looks as though we're going to be having James go and try and figure things out. Figure out what's going to be happening, um, and we'll have to wait to see what the uh, what the plan will be. Um, yeah, I've I've played a lot of Dota and casted a lot of Dota matches, and I've had a lot of issues come up, but I've never had this one come up where the person is here, but they're just giving away their gold, even though they're getting lastest and everything like that. So this is a really, really, you know, a really disheartening, I guess you could say, situation if you're on the side of University of Nevada when the first match just starts off just like this. So, I'll have to see if uh, if they will be able to come back from this or what the plan will be from the uh, discussion here with uh, James the Admin. Now, let's just quickly go and flash through each of the heroes, their levels, check those out, check out their items, um, their item progression possibly here. Wraith King does have the drums, power treads, and a blink dagger for himself. He is the highest farmed hero in the match, so... And see how that will go. Now, he does have another 1,800 gold, so I'm wondering what his next item is, in fact, going to be. Um, I feel like, really, an armlet would actually be a really great choice for him, because when you already have the drums up, that gives you some nice stats. Armlet would just put you right over the top with those stats and really make you a very, very big force to be reckoned with. Um, although, at the same time, you could try and go for um, something like the... Um, like a Assault Curos if you wanted to go for something like that, get up uh, the tankiness of his own team, as well as bring down the tankiness on the side of Crescenta Valley. And it would be actually very effective against the Doom, who doesn't really have that much armor, uh, or at least that much base armor, only having uh, right now 11 armor total, but only 2 base armor. So that uh, Assault Curos would be able to bring him down quite a bit, and really bring his tankiness down quite a bit. Granted, he would still have the mech available for himself, but... At the same time, let's go and look at the Dragon Knight right now. He has 2,080 gold. He might even be the one that decides to go for the AC for his team, which actually be a very, very good item for him to be able to pick up. Uh, seeing as how he already has the armlet and the power treads. But we'll be able to we'll have to see what he's gonna try and go for here, what his um what his plan will be. Now next up is Shadow Shaman, where he's had the arcane boots for a very long time. He picked them up very, very early on in the game. It was like five minutes or something like that. Um so, he's going to do that, or he's been able to have those for a very long time, as well as the fact that his Blink Dagger being up already for a Shadow Shaman is really, really powerful for him to be able to have. Um, look over at the Ancient Apparition. He has up uh, his own mana boots, but he's still just sort of sitting back here. He has up 1,800 gold, so I'm wondering what he's going to try and go for still. Um, because I feel as though if he wanted to go for the Agnum Scepter, which I really do feel like should be their, uh, their choice here on the Ancient Apparition, um... I feel like he should just go and pick up that point booster ASAP. Now, that's a side of uh, University of Nevada because Necropos is not really bringing anything to the team, sadly, at this point. Uh, look over the side of Crescenta Valley, though. You see the Earthshaker has his mana boost, does not have a little blink dagger, though. So that's setting the side of Crescenta Valley back quite a bit because we do have the blink initiation coming out from both the Wraith King as well as the Shadow Shaman. And so Crescenta Valley is missing that. Um, look over the TA. She's going for a Yasha instead. Um, and so she's going for more of that carry sort of a um, sort of a build, um, deciding to try and be basically the main core on the side of Crescenta Valley, as Doom is not going to be filling that as he went for a mech. Um, but if you look over at the other heroes, we see Nature's Prophet. He's going for the Blink Dagger, also for the Maelstrom. So I have to see um, 
to see what he's going to go for next. I feel like the next item for him should in fact be a Necronomicon with this sort of a build from him. Especially because when you are going up against a Wraith King, it's very, very powerful to be able to have a Necronomicon because it gives such great mana burn on the hero. That if you just pop the Necronomicon and have him go after the Wraith King, if he has no mana, his ultimate is basically useless and he becomes, you know somewhat of a melee creep with some decent, well, not decent, but really great damage, but the main focus of the hero, that reincarnate, isn't a factor anymore if you're able to burn all of his mana. Our next hero, Marana. Has up the Glove of Haste, doesn't have anything else up besides that, um, and her power treads, Ring of Aquila. So, I mean, this could possibly be a Midas, some sort of a recovery Midas, but I think this is most likely going to be another Maelstrom for the side of uh, Crescent Crescenta Valley. I think will be very, very powerful for them to be able to have. It'll add a lot of team fight for them um, with just those lightning procs as well as the individual push that it'll be able to give them. So, we'll have to see um, what, their, uh, what their plan is in terms of item pickups and everything like that. But, just waiting to see what's going to happen with this pause right now in Doom. He has up 2,000 gold, he has up his Midas, he has up a uh, mechanism as well, or mechanism as well as his, uh, his Tranquil Boots. So, I mean... He has that going from release. It's pretty fast when other Tranquil Boots aren't down, uh, which is one of the annoying parts about Tranquil Boots is the fact that basically if you get hit with them, or if you hit somebody with them, they basically become the most useless boots in the entire game. Uh, worse than brown boots, actually, in terms of movement speed. So, waiting to see what's going to happen here because, I mean, the problem is, um, the problem is the simple fact that Necrophos has basically become completely uh, completely null and void this game, which is not what you ever want to have happen, especially when you give a Necrophos, any hero, really. It doesn't matter if it's a Necrophos. It can be any hero. You give any hero solo safe lane for, um, for your team, and suddenly they get no gold, and it's right now 20 minutes in, and he has up a headdress and a buckler when he has 88 last hits. Like, in terms of last hits, he's right now second in terms of last hits, only topped by the Nature's Prophet, who at this point with a Maelstrom up should be able to start to overtake almost any hero in terms of last hits. Um, so... Let's see what, what the plan is, is... Oh, looks as though the uh, players are starting to play tic-tac-toe with the um, with the map here. As we sort of write it out. So, at this point, um, I feel as though... I feel as though the game is basically going to have to go to Crescenta Valley at this point, and it's, it's, I don't even feel like it's because of their gameplay. And I'm not knocking their gameplay at all, I think that they played relatively well, I think that they, um, they performed relatively well. The problem is the fact that Necro is completely useless at this point, so, we'll have to see, um, what their plan is going to be, because, uh, at the same time though, it might be a bit of a blessing, I guess you could say, because Necrophos, if he's giving his gold away and he just keeps on farming and giving all that gold away, it's going to give more gold over to the Dragon Knight, for example. It's going to give more gold over to the Wraith King. Um, and so, for example, you're right now with the Wraith King, who's beating out the... Um, um, you already have the Wraith King, who's beating out the Midas Doom right now, so that's really great for them. Um, with this, but at the same time, it's still that problem if you're just missing one of your core heroes. The difference between it be a support or something like that towards the very late game, and you're giving instead that gold over to a core in the very ultra late game to get him buybacks and stuff like that. This is basically their main, one of their main mid game cores um, that is completely useless at this point. So we'll have to see how this will play out. I don't even know what to really say at this point. Um, yeah. Um. I mean, other than that, let's go and look at the... Oh, that's interesting, what this guy is drawing out with his, uh, this thing. Wow, that's actually really cool. <laughs> I actually really like that. Interesting. Um, so... In terms of a gold lead, can't even really see it as uh, the pauses. Sort of destroying that mis little midi thing here. That's one thing that I'd like. Volvo, please make it so that this thing overlaps this, and so it's not the other way around, so we can see the gold graph, because I don't really care that the big thing of the game is paused. I think that I can tell that, based on the fact that the entire screen is grayed out, and there's, uh, you know, nothing happening at all. Because, if, I don't know if you know, but every hero has the ability to suddenly stop everything, and stop all animations and everything, and you can do that for all the creeps and stuff. So this isn't even a pause. I really need to be able to make sure that that center thing there says that the game is, in fact, paused. 
Um, so, still just waiting to see what will happen here. Um, let's see. What announcers do we have here as well as what HUDs? Let's go and check these out. Um, I mean, I'm still just in love with my Dire Stone. I think it's the best HUD in the entire world. I didn't like this uh, TI HUD, also. Not my biggest one. Uh, not my favorite HUD ever. Um, I mean, it's not... I still don't think it's quite as bad as... Um, um, you know, Genuine Valor here, which was TI 3's um, HUD. This one was just... Uh, I did not like this thing at all. Uh, granted, I think it's also because I don't like the brightness of it. I don't like naturally bright HUDs, which is why I really, really love my Dire Stone HUD. Um, there's also the... Um, Mana HUD, I believe it's called. Um, it's another really dark HUD. It's blue, though. But, yeah. Um, so. We'll have to see, um... Let's see what's gonna happen. In terms of the announcers, though, because that's that's what I really care about. Now, let's look, go and look at the announcers. What do we have? Juggernaut, Death Prophet, Bastion, GLaDOS, Trine, and Lena. So... Um, the others, we have Bastion, Flax, ooh, P-Flax. I remember I used to only use the P-Flax one, but then I decided that, eh, I'm going to move back over to the regular one because of the fact that I would always forget to go and change it between them. Um, and so, we'll have to see what the, uh, what the plan is, but... Same time, guys. Thanks for thanks for tuning in. I guess thanks for sticking around with the stream and everything like that, and me basically just, you know, rambling on and on. Um, so, this is this is fun for me too, guys. This is not just fun for you guys. I'm having tons of fun right now. Just sort of sitting here, looking at it, paused heroes. Um, same time though, if you do want to, um, if you do want to follow me, make sure you do follow me at uh, twitch.tv slash Nistagord, as well as on Twitter at at Nistagord Dota, N-I-S-T-E-G-O-R-D, D-O-T-A. And it was twitch.tv slash N-I-S-T-E-G-O-R-D. So, you can find me there if you do want to continue watching my cast and things like that. So, we'll have to see what's going to happen here in... Yeah, look at those. Look at those messed up gold graphs now. This is another thing that I don't understand how Valve hasn't fixed these ones. Um, I think that when, you know, the game stops, it should, like, you know, stop recording for the graph. Now. Yeah. Middle lane. Let me see what's going to happen. As we do see uh, University of Nevada. So. Be grouping up as five here in the middle lane, gonna be moving into the middle lane here trying to take a tower. And the T1 tower right now in the middle lane is down to 387 HP, so that should be a pretty easy take for them. It shouldn't be difficult at all. Um, especially when you have the Shadow Shaman wards up. We also have the reincarnate for Ritmi. And there goes Arrow gonna be hitting on the ancient apparition, but there's no way to really be able to go and um Allies disappear. To go in on that with that stun, so this will just be a nice free tower. The dragon form is available for the Dragon Knight, and they're gonna be oh, there you go, woman. A little damage here, but not really all that much. You just get the stun there onto Loya now. Radiance Middle Tower. Oh, Wipers can be hitting on the TA as well as the air strike, and they're both going to die. Obviously, they're going to be doom onto the Shadow Comet. He's going to be able to try and run, but not going to be able to. As soon as he lose his life, so now. Go in to somebody here. The TA and Earthquake are already dead. Shadow Shaman is the only one dead on the side of Mirror Street. Mirror Street is not a Reno, though. Is under attack. And we're going to be seeing the stun come out from Dragon Knight. Going to be able to kill off from Loy. And now we match going to be the next one. There goes Radiant's the Core Beacon. Be going up. Will they be able to go get it? Proc doesn't even need to proc. They will be able to just go in and right click Dyer's and down. Bottom tower is under attack. There we go. Now the Middle Sea 2 tower, tower will fall. That's four dead on the side of Crescenta Valley. Only one dead on the side of University of Nevada. I, honestly, I feel like this Necro pick at this point, or the Necro problem at this point, is actually helping them out a little bit here. He's just getting so much gold over to the, uh, over the supports and carries. Tower has fallen. Now, let's see what's going to happen here. Um, oh, there we go. Little Fissure in the middle lane there. So, that's a full BKB now for the Wraith King. Dragonite, what is he going to go for? He has 4,400 gold right now. Like, what is his next item choice going to be? Um, so, I mean, I think he should still try and go for the AC for his team, although a couple of items might be nice, but he moves on to the secret shop, gonna pick up the Hyperstone, so yeah, it will in fact be the AC, which is gonna be really, really nice for him to be able to have, um, just an all-around buff to his entire team, 
and, and really almost any buff that he gives the entire team will be very useful because it'll just help to buff the necro just a little bit. The items aren't going to be available. Um, so things like the drums are actually really helpful for him. Um, things like the AC will be very helpful. And I mean, the other thing is, is that one of the big problems is the fact that he's not going to be able to, um, I guess you could say, effectively use his mana because of the fact that he's not going to have much because Necro is a unit or is a hero that really, really, really needs to be able to have a large mana pool in order to constantly spam out his death bolts. Um, and if he doesn't have the ability to go and do that, then, you know, he's a lackluster hero in the end. So, he needs to be able to try and figure out something to do, something to be able to help fix his mana. Now, TP in the middle lane from Wraith King, he's going to try and rotate around here. The other sad thing is that Necro can't even pick up TP scrolls this one. Like, he has no options. Um, like, he can sit there and, you know, he'll be able to use it, but he doesn't have the gold to ever be able to pick one up because he's never going to have, um the gold to be able to pick it up. Now, there is a TA trap in the Roche right now, so they do know that they might be trying to go for Roshan here, and if they do decide to try and go for Roshan, like Wraith is now thinking that it's hard to do, something they can just hit him. TA does know on the rest of the side of the Valley, of course, knows because of that. Roshan, the Roshan trap is coming in from the Shadow Shaman, and I don't even know if they're going to be able to do anything. Your arrow flies into Murana, though. So Dyer's so bottom tower is under attack. I believe that arrow even didn't hit anybody there. I they can use right now. Quite a bit of damage. We'll leave it to the end. Oh, we're going to see it doing on to the Shadow Shaman right now. Shadow Shaman needs to put a bit of damage. Oh, there goes the FSM out for the Earth. They're going to be able to hit two there. And now with the Star Fall coming out from the Marana. Dragon Knight will in fact lose his life. And now Raven will be up next. KP gets popped. He's going to try and do something here, but doesn't look like he's going to be able to really do anything. Right, the position coming in on him. That's going to be his death, but he does fall. Three dead on the side of University of Nevada right now. And Roshan looks like those might actually be stolen by Percenta Valley. Oh, yes, I'm the one. He's already, he's already pretty low from University of Nevada trying to go for it. Roshan so. has fallen to the Radiant. Immortality. Ah. Doom. Let's see what will happen here. Is, uh, he has up another 1400 gold. I mean, I think his next item has to be a Shiva's Guard. Um, it would just be a great item for you to go and pick up with his Blink Dagger already up. Um, but the ability to go and blink in and have that all around just amazing team fight started with the Shiva's Guard being able to go and slow everybody on the enemy team down. That'll just do that little bit of damage to them. Um, not the most damage, but does it help to just slow everybody down? Um, so. Oh, here we go. Wraith is going to be trying to go in on the Nature Prophet. Now, this is going to be a couple of right clicks. Will we see the next class hit? Yep, there's the end That will, in fact, be a death on the Nature Prophet. It's 800 versus one that gets the kill there. Killing spree for him. He's already, right now, only about 300 gold away from his full Agony Scepter, which is going to be a huge item for me to pick up. I mean, that'll completely nullify the mech on the, on the side of Crescenta Valley, which would be massive for them to be able to have. Right now, in terms of a gold lead, about a 5,000 gold lead going the way of University of Nevada. In terms of experience, a little bit over a 7,500 experience lead going the way of Crescenta Valley. So either team is leading in terms of one aspect of the game, be that um, the experience or the goal. So not a complete destruction of either team right yet. And this is going to start to become more and more interesting as time goes on and gold flows into the support of the University of Nevada. Now, Dragon Knight, he only has 70 gold up right now, and that's a full AC that he right now has, so he's going to be able to finish up that pretty soon. Um, or actually, you know, already finish it up, so he has that pretty quickly in the match. So that's a 26 and a half minute Armlet Power Trez Assault Curas Dragon Knight. Wraith King, there's a 26 minute BKB Blink Power Treads and Drums Wraith King, so they're really doing very, very well right now in terms of their farm on their cores, and there's the overall tank ability for them. Ancient Apparition does now have a full Aghanim Scepter. TA as well now picks up a full blink. So Dyer's she's going to be able to go and fight with that. Is under attack. Able to keep things with the Wraith. Radiant oh, structures are fortified. Not to be able to hit anybody's dust in a range with there. A little hit Necro if that range people wasn't there. But now Blink is officially up for the Earthshaker. He needs to get a full announcement from Warrior though. And there we go. Radiant's now Blink is top up on tower him. Has he needs fallen. to try to figure what he's going to do next though. Dominating. Oh, at the same time, though, Nature's Prophet does lose his life here to Ancient Apparition. Or did he actually die? Died in the bottom lane there, so we need to go for it. Now, let's go and actually look at the items as a whole. We see Nature's Prophet, he picks up the ultimate up, so I think he's going to be trying to go for the Scythe of Vice for himself. Once he picks that up, it'll be really nice to be able to have, going to give the team even more crowd control, be able to go and get more control during the team, that would be really nice. Um, let's look at the Shadow Shaman as well, as now in 
Ogre Club, so he's getting close to his own Agatha Scepter, only about, you know, 1,600 gold off from that, which really, at this point, is not that much gold for him. So he'll be able to have that up in the not-so-distant future. Gold going more towards the lead for University of Nevada as time goes on. Reaching towards about a 6,000-ish gold lead for them. Um, just experience this actually moving down a little bit here, but Crystal Valley does still have the lead at around a 7,500 experience lead. Back to the items right now. Templar Assassin still only with that Yasha pickup. Uh, needs to go and pick up that Ultimate Orb next, which will help her a lot in the team fights, bring up her tank ability a little bit, as well as just her overall Denied. damage because of the um, because of the agility from the Ultimate Orb as well. And then when she has the full Manta style, that'll be even more useful uh, to be able to get her out of um, certain things. Like I believe it will in fact get you out of Cold Feet if you pr if you use it once the Cold Feet is used on you to stop the um, the ticking of it. Oh, will they try and go for this Necrophos? Nope, Necrophos going to be able to just simply walk away there. Unseen. Yeah, it does get one ward there, one sentry ward. Now, Doom, he has up his plate mail, so it is in fact going to be the Shiva's guard coming out for him most likely, unless it is the AC, but I doubt that it'll be the AC here. Um, really needs to be able to go pick up that Shiva's guard, which is Blink already picked up. Now, TA, still not looking all that rich right now. Needs to be able to get up more gold, 10,930 net worth. In comparison to 13,000 coming out is under the attack. right now. It looks as though we're having a, a, uh, a full gank coming in onto the Templar Assassin down bottom, but she is already gone. She's already pieced out of there. And this might actually just be a full five-man push, or at least a four-man push, as we see the race to the top right now, um, coming out of University of Nevada. And there it goes. Oh, the top. And now we have Dragonite going into stun out onto the new. Yes. The ice has come out as well. There'll be three people. There we go. Oh, never mind. Only his two. There we go. As well, flying onto the new. Maybe that's going to be damaged. Almost beat death. Yes, almost beat death. But now we have the Dragonite going to be able to get the stun off onto the Marana Marana. Will that be his life possibly here? Yes, he will be his life. Now Diego will be coming in. Doesn't the ages up for herself. And now we have the Dragonite trying to pop his armlet and keep on causing that on and keep his life going, but not able to. So now we have a double kill coming up for the Templar Assassin. We're going to get ourselves some nice kills there. 2,300 gold after that fight. We're going to go and uh, we're going to get ourselves a couple of kills there. Nice job from the side of Crescenta Valley, but as well as the side from uh, University of Nevada, because they were fighting without the Wraith King. A large portion of their damage and their uh, and their lockdown does come from the Wraith King still, because he has such a ridiculous stun uh, with his Wraith Fire Blast. In terms of the uh, golden experience after that, no real changes at all. As it really was basically a wash there in terms of the uh, in terms of the kills. So experience and gold basically stay unchanged. Although at the same time, this does bring TA up quite a bit. It looks like if she came up, uh, so she went up two positions there in terms of her net worth. Now ahead of uh, the Dragonite, the Nation's Prophet, and the Doom here, uh, with the only one ahead of her being the Wraith King. Now. She's going to keep on trying to get her farm, but she does move up to the top lane and get some last hits up there with the, uh, a little bit of help there from Earthshaker being able to bring him a little bit lower. But right now, this is the University of Nevada is just going to go and group up his five here yet again. At least it's four, but it looks as though Wraith King will in fact join them this time around at least. He has up 2,300 gold just about here, as well as the Maelstrom already picked up, so it looks like he might be trying to go for a Mjolnir. Um, he could go over these trees here and pick himself up a, um, a Hyperstone if he wants to, but I think he's going to be saving his gold to be able to get a buyback available, or at least have his buyback available. And, oh, they're going to be able to move in here. There goes the Blink in. Oh, but the Blink out from the Doom right away, and Ruin not able to go and get off any stuns there, messing that one up. And the smoke is still up on three heroes here. Well, four heroes, actually, with the Ancient Apparition still being smoked up. And they only know that Wraith King was there, but at the same time, they have to understand that if he was trying to dive them when he saw the Observer Ward there, when they, he had an Observer Ward seeing them, he was going to go and try and uh, teamfight them. He was not going to go and try and teamfight them 1v2 like that, especially when there's a possibility of other heroes being behind the tower waiting for him as well. Now, Nature's Prophet, while this push is happening bottom from the side of University of Nevada, we do see Nature's Prophet going and pushing the top lane here. And he does have the Scythe of Vice, so he is starting to get to the point where he can start to fight. With me! effective at fighting. He did fight before, but he's starting to get more and more effective with the, uh, with the farm he was getting as well as the levels. At the same time, though, he is able to push this top lane, and the T2 is already down, so any pressure he brings right now will just be attached right onto this T3 tower, which we do not want to Oh, here's the Jackson coming in from the Earthshaker, going to be trying to go in, and will we see a fish coming out? Fish not available for the 10 seconds. There goes the Duke coming out from the Duke. Um, there's somebody there looking to be able to attack the Shadow Combo. Shadow Combo is still able to get the boards out. TA going to lose his life, as well as the Earthshaker. There's two down the side of University of Nevada, with two down the side of Crescenta Valley, but it looks like we're still going to see Nick lose his life, and now. Oh, Wraith can take quite a bit of damage. He does still have the up. There goes the Wraith can be able to lose his life now. We have the Liberty Wave from Marana. Will we see the Blink forward from the Wraith can? Yes, we will. Will we be able to go for somebody here? There goes the ultimate coming out from Marana, but the Wraith Fire Blast not going to be able to hit on her. Her ultimate does proc right at the exact moment that would have connected, keeping her away from it. 
So now, this T2 tower down bottom, Radiant Blue Effect Fall, tower. University of Nevada, going to be able to attack. go and grab it. And so, looks as though we're going to be seeing uh, possibly some more pressure. Nope, they're in fact going to just go and blink back, get out of that fight, and keep themselves in a nice safe position. After taking that uh, T2 tower, they have to be pretty happy about that. Shiva's Guard is now up for Doom, though, so that's going for uh, the side of Crescenta Valley now. So the next, his next item, uh, he might want to try and go for something like the Refresher Orb, actually, to be able to go and Doom out two targets. Um, that could actually be very, very powerful for him. Um, other than that, maybe an AC even, bring up the um, bring up the armor of his own team and the attack speed of his own team and stuff like that. I don't know how that would really work out for him. He, that would bring his own armor up very, very high, which would stop a lot of the physical damage coming out of University of Nevada. Um, because they don't have a Desolate or anything like that. Um, which, actually, I feel like Raven should have actually uh, picked up here in this game. Um, maybe even over the BKB, because he wants to be able to be focused down, because if he does die, his ultimate, um, procking causes mass, mass slow on the, um, on the enemy side. And then Mjolnir, fully picked up by him. He's gonna be sitting over by the secret shop here a little bit, but not for long, as the, uh, Mjolnir being flown out to him, or at least the recipe for the Mjolnir being flown out to him now. In terms of a gold lead, over 7,500 gold lead going the way of University of Nevada, and a pretty quick jump down in terms of the experience. Crescenta Valley still, though, with a little bit under a 5,000 experience lead going their way, but that's down from about 7,500 experience lead they had not that long ago, actually. Here, this is starting to come back in this game. Dragonite picks up the Crystallis, as well as the Helm of the Dominator. He's going for some nice tank ability, as well as just some overall, um, damage output, which really is what they're going to need from this dragon. They're going to need him to be able to go and carry this match with the uh, help of the Wraith King, because, yeah, you're going to be having some farm on the Wraith King, some form Shadow Farm, but that's not going to be able to carry the game for you. You need to be able to have these two cores get really farmed to be really effective, because you still have one of your, your main cores being essentially completely useless. I mean, right now he's 1,024 HP, he has 754 mana, and he's level 14 right now in the Necrophos. Not a good start at all. He really he only has the buckler and the headdress. And the thing is, he can't even get power treads right now. Like, what are his options? Um, and the answer is, what are his options? Is absolutely none. He has no options right now uh, as the Necroface. So, he needs to be very careful in terms of what he does. But the same way, he has been pretty effective in the team fights. Um, getting off those, uh, those Reaper Scythes to be able to go and help kill off heroes as well as lock them down. As well as, um, you know, being able to... Um, you know, just be able to secure kills before keeping people up, of course. That's what I was trying to say with his death pulse, keeping people up um, at high life and just helping his team to be able to sustain, which with the Dragonite and Wraith King, really, really powerful to be able to have that. And we do add on the Ancient Apparition, the fact that he loves it when team fights go on for long periods of time. He uses Ice Flash, he loves to be able to eat away at people and keep them from being able to regen any life from any form whatsoever. An arrow flies from Mirana and fly and not hit any of them. Dyer's middle tower not is under attack. Oh, they're going to see if we got them. They're already down. So there we go. Death actually on. Dragonite is well the next one coming out. There's a Shiva's Guard being used by the Doom. Going to be hitting on the Shadow 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 up there, and now he's going to be back up. They need to take a lot of damage. There's no tank ability for him at all. He's going to affect his life. Dyer's like Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Lose its life. Two minutes and 47 seconds left. They have nothing on him, though. And now Wraith King... Well, not Wraith King. It looks like Earthshaker actually was the one that was just pinging out the Roche bit, saying, guys, this is what we want to go for. We want to go for Roshan right now. And buyback's coming out, as they don't want to have... Dyer's top, top tower, tower all. is under attack. And Wraith King... Double oh, damage! It might have been the bottom tower or check here. Um, looks like it was the middle tower, actually. There we go. That's what I was looking for. So, middle tower falls um, to the Radiant. Roshan well has fallen the into to the Radiant of her team. Has the mana style up now, and as well as another 3,200, about 3,300 gold, actually, up for her. So I feel like the next item really has to be a Desolator for her. Gives so much great damage, maybe even just the DKB, actually. Um, this would basically shut down almost everything on the side of the University of Nevada in terms of their lockdown and things like that. That well, should be really, really great for her to be able to have. But we'll have to see what she does decide to actually go for here. Um, with her gold. About 3,600 gold. Can't really go wrong at that point. Um, I mean, if she wants to go for a Desolator, so be it. BKB, so be it. Butterfly, so be it. Um, any other items I think would be really, really useful. Daedalus, so be it. Like, just needs to get something to be able to bring herself a little bit farther ahead, no matter what that item honestly really is. 24 to 24 right now, even in terms of the kill score. In terms of the gold lead, though, wow, that's a big upset for University of Nevada. 
with now less than a 2,500 gold lead going their way, where they had almost a 10,000 gold lead a very short period of time ago, but there were all those kills that happened during that attempted siege that went to the side of uh, Crescenta Valley, really brought Crescenta Valley back into this game, and now experienced huge spike up actually here. They were maxing out at about an 8,000 experience lead before, but now we're over a 14,000 experience lead for Crescenta Valley right now. Necrophos there, yeah, this is this is just cruel. Why pick off the Necrophos like this? He's done nothing to you. Death Force comes out, and death for him. So just three kills basically for them. It's just nothing for them. Essentially a very sad range creep. Um, I mean, at least he does have, you know, level 15, so he has all of his regular skills maxed out. And very close to level 16, so then I have level 3 Reaper Scythe. Probably at that point is that he then costs him 500 mana to cost one Reaper Scythe, and he doesn't have the mana to even really be able to do that. He gets off like two Death Pulses, and suddenly he has no mana to be able to get off a Reaper Scythe. It's just the downside whenever you have a Necrophos who has literally zero farm. Then like, a lot of the times people say, oh, you have zero farm, when you actually have a little bit of farm, he literally has zero farm right now. Like, th keep in mind, this was a originally core Necrophos with 1,800 net worth right now at the 30, you know, 39 minute mark, basically. They might try and go and possibly push him out here. Doom comes forward, they're going to shoot the version to be used, and now with BKB from the Wraithing, and now Fisher going to be on the wrong side, going to keep him safe. Now he blinks down into the jungle, going to be able to try and move over a different way so the arrow doesn't have a possibility of hitting him. Trying to basically juke around that. You know, get back to some more farm. Looks like we're going to be seeing Crescenta Valley trying to group up his five here. Which, you know, not even trying, they are gripping those four at least with Nation Profit down bottom. So they're going to try and uh, split push University of Nevada out here. Now, University of Nevada, if they're able to get off a really good team fight, could start to do a lot of damage to the side of Crescenta Valley. Because, honestly, if you don't have to pop the wards here, um, miraculously, then it would not be a far stretch. Oh, here we go, DK will be getting through as well as now the great ward in for Lincoln for the great thing. Take a little bit of damage because Doom does affect what on the Dragon Knight right now. H is going to fly knocks him down on anybody right now. The TA does affect Lucian Life as well as affect the Doom affects Lucian Life. And the Nation Prophet will be the next one as Wraith is coming from the Wraith. He will affect the kill, but the Doom will still have to be already up and available for the Wraith. We never have to back back in the game. There was BKD Soulfish. Make sure I'm actually out from the TA. She already had the BKD up on her. And now Canyon going to lose his life there. 82 seconds. She will be able to back up. Old Trick kill up for the Wraith right now. We do have the leap available from the Marana. Will she really try and go for the stun? No, not quite yet. We have the blink available in five seconds, four seconds for him. Two Dyer's seconds for the Shadow Shot. Will be able to blink forward. Yeah, he's going to try and blink forward. There goes the arrow, and then there goes the Hex as well. Stun now from the Wraith. Now this is going to be the death of Loy on the Marana. Going to that Goose's life there. Shadow Shaman is the one that gets the kill. Going to deny the Wraith King the possibility of a Rampage. Although I don't think it was quick enough after the, uh, the Ultra kill there to be able to get that. But now, Shadow Shaman, 2,500 gold in his bags, does still have his wards available, as well as the Aghanim Scepter, so they can push this pretty easily, actually. Necrophos joining him in the middle lane, looks as though we also have Dragon Knight coming in towards the middle lane here. He has, uh, he has up that Crystallis and everything like that, so he has quite a bit of damage coming in towards him. The big problem is that he has the level 3 Dragon Knight Ultimate, which does sort of kill a little bit of his pushing power, but at the same time, still, at this point, not all that much of a, uh, all that much of a problem for him. 26-29, to 29. we'll go over at the gold lead now, just about zero before, but now it's a little bit under 2,500 lead. Radiant's the middle the tower is under and, attack. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're going to have the coming from the Earthshaker, as well as the Reapers coming from the Necro Necrophos, and that's going to be the death of the Earthshaker. Shadow Shaman taking a lot of damage right now. Will it be enough? No, it will not be. It's just going to be able to escape. Fish can put a bit of damage on the Dragon Knight as well, and they will, in fact, be able to go and fall Dyer's back here. Tower no mana for Necrophos to be able to get off a Death Pulse here. We'll Radiant's middle tower is under uh, attack. Enough, as we do see ports already coming back to the bottom lane here. And it is good at least that his team is starting to go and help him out by picking him up TP scrolls. And now, his Prophet gets to get a simple TP away, blinking into the trees and just going and using his relocate. Regeneration. Now, this is actually going for the Wraith King here. They're going to blink forward and now Wraith King, he pops his Mjolnir on himself. He's just going to go back off here. Heaven's Halberd is actually picked up on him now. So he's going to be able to have that up the next fight, which is going to be really great to be able to have against somebody like a TA, where if you just go and use that Heaven's Halberd on her, keeping her uh, disarmed, not able to hit anybody, really just gets rid of a lot of the damage on the side of Crescenta Valley, or you use it on the Doom, or even on the Murano, who's starting to get a nice amount of farm. Ancient Apparition now with a Blink Dagger up for himself, so he's very mobile now, actually, with a Force Staff as well as Blink Dagger up for him. 42 minutes in. Let's go and look at the Gold Graph 5,000 Gold League going away at University of Nevada. And, you know, about a 7,500-ish lead, maybe about 8,000-ish lead for the side of, uh, of Trenta Valley still in terms of experience. Now, 
That's where we just go and take a look at the items as a whole across the board here. We see uh, Ancient Apparition right now. He has up, as we are talking about before, all those mobility items. So he's nice and mobile, not usually the farm you'll see for uh, an Ancient Apparition. And then look at this at Shadow Shaman. He almost has up a Refresher Orb now with the Perseverance and the Oblivion Staff finished up. All he needs now is the recipe, although it is, I believe, the most expensive recipe in the game. Or the expensive recipe itself in the game. Uh, so he's going to need to wait for that. Be able to, or to be able to have the gold up for that, but once he has up the Agonim Scepter and the Refresher Orb, I don't know if Crescento Valley will be able to stop the push, because all he has to do is go and pop Wars, Refresher, and then Wards again, and suddenly you're just going to see these towers, these T3 towers, just evaporate. I mean, the bottom tower is already down to 560 HP, basically. The middle tower is also already down to 480 HP, and then the top tower is down to 609 HP. So... These kills are going to start to matter a lot. And it looks as though we are, in fact, seeing a Doom Assault Kuros pick up here. Um, Nisi, go and have that courier go and pick up the, um, the items for the, uh, for the Assault Kuros for him, then go and run over to the secret shop and pick him up the full Assault Kuros with that Hyper Stone. But need to wait for that to be able to happen. Bottom lane, the group up from University of Nevada. They're trying to see what they're going to be able to go for here. And I feel like they're really just going to try and buy some time for the uh, Shadow Shaman to be able to pick up his, uh, his Refresher Ward. And there we go. Dyer's top tower so is under top, attack. Trying to push some pressure in this top lane, but not really all that much he can do is to the only thing that are here to be able to hit the tower. But I mean, this is just slowly chipping away at the tower. I mean, there's no way you can do that on this tower. And so any damage you do is effective damage to it. Um, the problem is that you do have a Shadow Shaman in your face and who's able to do you know, more damage to your tower than uh, a lot quicker with those wards, especially when he picks up the Agon Scepter and the Refresher Ward for himself. So, we've been this far into the game. Let's actually go and switch it over to the buyback status, because this is going to be the real big important one. I mean, I will occasionally swap it over to the net worth, but buyback going to be a big one right now. With the only two people on the map right now that have buyback being the Doom and the Wraith King, the rest of them either on cooldown, that's the Nation of Prophet, or the uh, Dragonite, or not having enough gold. And it's actually quite a bit of gold off for, um, for example, the Ancient Apparition. He's... 1,071 gold off right now. Um, so he's quite a bit off. Necrophos, he's uh, he's right now never going to be able to have buyback. He's never going to be able to have it. Um, ever, because of the glitch that's currently happening with him. Right now, Wraith King has up 5,500 gold. Like, what is he going to spend his money on next? I mean, like, I think a heart would probably be the next best one. Um... Thinking about heart on him and then picking up something like the Abyssal Blade might be really great. Bring up his damage as well as his tankability with those two items would be really, really great for him to be able to have. Um, Port from Nation popped up at the top lane, gonna be able to try and push there. Smoke though is up on uh, on University of Nevada and oh, Wraith King. This could be pretty bad for me. Is this possibly gonna be caught out here? Nope, never mind. It's gonna be okay, it looks like. He's gonna go and farm the jungle a little bit here. I don't even know what he's going to go for the next 6,000 gold. Like, what, how much is his actual buyback? 1,652 gold. So, we'll just see what the plan is for that one. Hmm. Now, it's Prophet again, just being annoying and split-pushing this top lane. I'm going to be moving in here, try and push out these creeps a little bit here. Um, this is just onto the top of the town. That's what he has to do, is he just has to basically, um... Slow push over and over again. Now each and every last one will fly onto him and gonna be able to hit him. But there's no follow-up for it also. It's just really gonna be an annoyance more than anything. I'm gonna be able to keep him from blinking into the trees here. So he's just gonna go and run into the trees himself and go and TP away in just a moment. So we'll be able to see what's gonna happen there. Now, waiting to see um what the next plan of action would be. Doom, he has up twenty one hundred gold. He has up basically all the farm he could ever want. Needs to go and replace those tranquil boots though. Um so yeah. We'll have to see what the uh, what the plan will be. Nature's Prophet, bottom lane, going to try and push here. And Creeps Wave is going to keep on pushing here in the top, though. Um, at the same time, no real action happening in this game right now. Abyssal Blade is now picked up for Wraith King, so there we go. That's the big item that I was looking for here. I don't know if it's going to be the Heart or the Abyssal Blade, but either one would have been a great option. He decides to go for the Abyssal Blade. Oh, I have to go into somebody, because he now, he now has a really, really great stun that he could be able to do, um, or a stun that he's able to go for. Now, let's see, um, oh, arrow flies, you get a hit on anybody? Don't think it will. No. I don't even know where that arrow flew from. I wish there's some indicator on the map or something like that for casters for where the arrow flew, or at least where it is sort of thing. 
So, board into the bottom lane from the Dragon Knight. He's going to try and just stop this push from the Nation Prophet as he goes and kills off his Treants. Um, he has 3,000 gold, though, so he's going to be able to go and get his farm up. And top lane, actually, they're trying to go for the Nation Prophet. There goes the Ice Blast, both Shackles, and the Ward Run, and that's going to be his death. It looks like he actually popped his BKB there at the very last second. I don't even know what he's going to be able to try and do there. So... A little bit of a waste of a BKB there. Um, so that's his, what was that, his 9 second BKB charge. Now he's down to 8 seconds on that BKB. Arrow flies, gonna smack the Wraith King in the face. Will they be able to try and go for this? They probably blind back to the game and now. Oh, Wraith King, this is pretty bad for him. He's gonna be able to die really quickly. He has no tank ability at all. Now, will this be his death? There we go. Yeah, this is gonna be his death. He's gonna try and pop his BKB, but that's still gonna be his death. And look at the amount of damage he was just taking, actually, with the help of the Doom Alpha Aura there. A lot of damage going in and stun goes on the Roshan here. And as well as the fact that you're also the Dayless on TA, so that's where the damage was all coming from there. Um, was the TA crit with the Alpha Wolf, Alpha Wolf Aura on as well from the Doom. And now, uh, my version, there goes the Ice Blast and the Final Hit on them. And now, Roshan my version, oh, snaps the Aegis of the Immortal. Doesn't have quite get the, uh, get the cheese though, but that's actually, I think, actually worth it there. It would have been snatched the Aegis, but he does lose his life basically instantly. But there we go, keeping that out of the um, out of the hands of the Radiant here. Nice job from him, actually. Microvos, level 19 is up on him. So, I mean, I guess he's at least getting levels for himself. Still higher level than the Shadow Shaman um, and the Ancient Apparition. This game starting to go pretty late. 49 and a half minutes in right now. Gold lead still, at this point, pretty relatively small right now, the actual gold difference. Those experience as well, pretty relatively small. Now the person is going to be coming in the top or bottom lane, I mean. And Shadow Shaman does have his wards and refresher and wards available. But I don't know if they're going to be able to go and stop push here, um, even with the wards available. Now we have the airship coming in. There goes the airship coming in. Shadow Shaman, there's going to be wards coming down. Refresher are going to be coming through. And now wards are going to come out. That's double wards. Now will it be enough? There goes the hex going on to what looks like the Nation of Prophet. But now we have BKBs coming out. Two buybacks coming from both the Ancient Prophet as well as the Dragon. They're going to try and go and fight this thing right now. but. Which is why he won't really be able to do anything. And that's now Dying both barracks down, even balance. with both of the Shadow Shaman wards being popped. Tuno has to wait 140 seconds before he has the Refresher Orb up again. I don't know if popping the Refresher Orb there was really worth it. I mean, if you look at it this way, it's the fact that he got nothing from it. No kills. They lost heroes there. He lost his own life. I mean, might as well have not popped it. Just gone and trying to fight them as they tried to push the T on um, the middle tower instead. Or the middle uh, uh, tower and barracks instead. So... Desolator now picked up for the Nation's Prophet. They want to be able to make sure that they are hitting, like, trucks. Um, so, they're waiting for that. 31 to 30 is still the score, though. Now we have Ancient Apparition. Uh, hit on Marana. That's just annoying whenever you have to try and deal with that. Ancient Apparition. He should pick up a Refresh Orb. He's fit a Refresh Orb right now. He could go and kill them here. But, sadly, not. Um, the ultimate doing quite a bit of damage to the Marana, actually, so... <laughs> Yeah, a second AA ultimate would actually be able to kill him off there. Um, we have an MKB now up for the Templar Assassin, so now that Heaven's Halberd on the Wraith can completely useless here, actually, because she'll always be able to hit now. Um, Boots of Travel now up for the Doom, and so he now is basically officially six-slotted. All he needs to do now is get rid of his Midas and pick up some other item. Um, I feel like for him, um, either the Refresher or the Agnum Scepter would be the best choice for him, although I think the Refresher would be the better one, because when he dooms somebody, he's not really likely to be able to fight him almost at all. Um, and so, no reason he needs to have it last forever, so might as well just get the Refresher and be able to kill, uh, or doom two targets, and be able to kill both of them off instead of just having a longer duration on one of them. In terms of a gold lead, about 2,500 gold lead going the way of the University of Nevada. But it is moving back up towards the side of Crescenta Valley. No experience, about a 10,000 experience lead going the way of Crescenta Valley um, here. And so they're leading in terms of experience. It's basically always been on the side of Crescenta Valley in terms of experience, at least. In terms of gold, though, it's the exact opposite. It's basically always been in the favor of the University of Nevada. Now, oh, pings are coming out. I'm not going to pick anybody off there. Doom though, 3,800 gold, still waiting to figure out what his next item is going to be. Marana as well needs to be able to pick up her next item pretty soon. Um, I think that something like the Butterfly would actually probably be the best choice for her. Um, so, yeah. Denied. Oh, arrow flies, only getting nice boost there. Splits the wick there between the two, uh, two little boots of heroes there. And 
freaking dead. So it does tell them that the Marana is around here somewhere and that uh, they do want to try and back off a little bit there. Golden experience so just sitting the same way they were just a little bit ago. Um, although it is a very close gold lead now going the way of uh, University of Nevada. So, but they are still keeping their gold lead at the same time though. But it's very, very close. So. In the middle lane though, with the refresher orb and the wards available for Shadow Shaman, looks as though the University of Nevada wants to try and go in on this middle lane of racks in the middle T3 tower. Radiance middle so, tower is uh, under attack. Shadow Shaman, there's a refresher and the wards are the other side of the tower now. And there's no way you can stop this really. Like they're on either side of the tower, so they're not grouped up at all. So you can't find, you know, run Radiance away from middle them. tower. And now both barriers will back all. The problem is that. Oh, Goku's out on the Dragonite, but he's dug me out from the Doom right now. Goku's dug me out. They're going to time out for the York. They're going to do a lot of damage. That's actually done for two heroes right away. Three dead actually outside of Universe to bottom. Are you going to be coming back in just a moment? They're going to be coming back right now. Ancient Apparition is not down, but he is basically all the way back at the base. And that's four dead on the side of University of Nevada. With uh, no kills on the side of Crescenta Valley High School. And it looks as though. We'll be seeing. Um, we're going to have. As they all start to, uh, at least TA starts to push into the middle lane here. 4,300 gold up for her. She's going to be very, very farmed. Buybacks, though, if we look over on the side of University of Nevada, you see that both the Wraith King and the Shadow Shaman have their buybacks available. Let's move over to the net worth, actually. Um, here we see that the, still the highest net worth is, in fact, the Wraith King for himself. So he's still very, very farmed, but he did still just die there. He's not tanky enough to be able to go and survive that onslaught. Um, he needs to go and pick up something like a heart for himself. It's that simple. Um, I feel like he honestly needs to go and replace the blink tag with a heart. Oh, here we go. They're going to try and go in on Thieves' Apparition here in his own base. They're going to chance out of him now. Oh, never mind. We're going to see. Oh, wait. This is not going to be the Thieves' Apparition available. They're going to be getting to him. And he's going to try and run with that, but it doesn't matter. He's going to still lose his life. And now they're going to try and move in after him. And there we go. They're going to be able to on onto the Doom. And now we have the Ancient Apparition going to fly through. Going to be hitting on just. Dyer's no, not just anyway, but he's going to be affecting a couple of people there. Three people actually. There goes the Great Blue Slide. Doesn't have to be cool. The buyback available. Shadow Shaman just still his buyback available. It's called the Five Back. And Shadow Shaman Five Back. And now the Ancient almost actually. Nope, not quite exposed yet, but now the Doom might lose his life here. That's going to be the death of the Doom, and now looks like we're still going to lose his life, but that's going to be the death of the Ancient Apparition, and it's going to be the Shadow Shaman that's fired on the side of University of Nevada. And now the T4 Towers are, in fact, exposed. Five back from the Doom, he's going to come back. Dragon Knight is back up. Doesn't have his ultimate, though, it looks like. Actually, never mind, he doesn't back up his ultimate. There was the ultimate being popped. Armlet needs to be popped by him as well, though, but he doesn't pop the ultimate. There goes the, oh, the hacks on to him. That's going to be his death. The Echo Slam comes out. That's the GG coming out from University of Nevada, Reno. GG coming out. They fought Radiant real well victory. for the fact that they had a very odd glitch coming out during that game. Wow. Amazing gameplay. Coming out from them. Just... Uh, honestly, both teams play very, very well, but I have to give major props to University of Nevada, Reno, just for how well they played with the handicap that they were given in this matchup. But either way, thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. This is only game one of our best of five series here for the uh, high school star league. Uh, please do stay tuned for the next matchup in this best of five matchup between these two. You can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash I am right now casting it, though, on the official high school star league uh, Twitch, though, so you can go and check that out, as well as follow me on Twitter, at Nistagordota. Thank you very much, and we'll be back with the next matchup in just a couple of minutes.